children are returning to schools in larger numbers, um, there might be a period of watchful waiting where, where school leaders and teachers just need to kind of let things kind of settle down and, and find some kind of ground again. And, um, and that's an important part of the process. But kind of more than that, once kind of children are back into some kind of routine at school, what can teachers do to support children on their return to school to help them feel safe and maybe to alleviate any kind of worries or anxieties that might be uh, might be arising for them? I think some things that we can do that will be very helpful for young people is to normalise the range of experiences that everyone will have had and the range of emotions that will come with that and to help young people understand that what they're experiencing emotionally um, may make sense when we un when we unpick it when we stand back from it when we look at it because um, some people feel very embarrassed or ashamed of feeling certain emotions like perhaps feeling afraid or feeling anxious or feeling worried some people will still feel very threatened and um, worried for their life potentially mm -hmm. or the lives of their parents or caregivers and these are the things that tend to um, you know, exacerbate, I suppose, um, our anxieties is if we don't feel safe or we don't think those who are taking care of us are safe. So I think it's really important that we make that all okay. And we say, actually, that's, that's your body and your brain keeping you safe and telling you that there might still be a danger. And for some people, there is still a danger. Mm. And so they, they won't feel that safety, I suppose. So it's about kind of normalising that. And I know when I learnt about trauma and treatments for trauma, one of the metaphors that I found really useful was this idea about, like, and actually I can relate it to my own kids. Sometimes if I say, like, can you guys tidy up a little bit in your room? <laughs> you know? And then, like, two minutes later, they're like, it's tidy! And yeah. then you open the cupboard and everything just sort of falls out. So sometimes with um, how we sort of store our memories and our experiences, is a bit like just shoving them all in the mm. wardrobe right and then they'll start to kind of spill out when we're not expecting it or um when we're not prepared for it and so sometimes um making sense of our experiences involves sort of taking stuff out of the cupboard and looking at it a little bit and maybe folding it so we can put it back in neatly and everything that isn't mm. going to come out so another way i suppose that can be really helpful for children and young people is just to be given a kind of um a story and understanding mm. of what just happened which is hard because we're probably all there too like what did just happen Still you know I'm it, trying, yeah. trying to make sense of it too and so but all of that I think all of those discussions even when we can say as grown-ups we're still trying to understand this too can be very helpful for children in starting to give them a sense of meaning and how they take it how they can make sense of mm. you know these last few months because some people will have been given you know a lot of appropriate information and it's helped them to navigate this and some people won't have and they will need that now they'll need to catch up with some of, yeah. some of the information and they may have had misinformation they may not understand and so those really simple things might just help settling process let's normalize it let's give a sort of a story around it so that we can start to make sense of it <laughs> Tell me life is beautiful